More innards. Pump this. Hey, Gail Pump and out. Bill. Hey. <laughs> so, um, Bill has joined us today to talk to us about the difference between Vibe and yeah. Rotary Pumps. And why one over the other, that kind of a thing. Okay. So. So, why don't you kind of break it down? Rotary. Okay. So here we have a vibrating pump, and mm -hmm. here is a rotary pump. And some, some of the big differences I've seen on blogs lately, uh, people are wondering what the differences are between the two pumps. Yeah. Uh, and why. And why. Mm -hmm. And the, the vibe pump has this piston inside that through the use of this coil pushes, uh, or moves back and forth. Okay. And pushes water out the end of this this pump. It's electromagnet, right? Le electromagnetic. Uh, this is a coil or an inductor, and it creates a magnetic field. It pulls this piston back against the spring, and then when the coil relaxes, it pushes the sp uh, spring pushes it forward and mm -hmm. pushes some water out the end. You know how strong magnets are, so. Woo. Yeah. Okay. And uh, a rotary pump works a little bit different. Here's here's a pump together. Here's a pump all taken apart here. Here's the motor that goes with it. So you can kind of see the scale difference between the size of this and the weight of <laughs> all this. this. <laughs> okay. Um, so this, is, this is your five pound. This is, is that, so this pounds. is just yeah. an example motor and that's what you would have for either vibratory or rotary pumps? So for rotary pumps, this it's not an actual motor from this pump, but it's okay. an example of a smaller size one from maybe a, a home espresso machine. The commercial machines usually have a little bit larger pump or okay. motor. Okay. Uh, same pump. Sometimes they're dip rated different, but uh, for the most part they're um, identical for the home and commercial. Okay. Just the size of, of some components inside change uh, depending on how much volume you need for your espresso machine. Um, so how does this guy work so in comparison to this one? This guy, the rotary vane pump's pretty cool in the sense that we've got this uh, rotating shaft that goes between these two things here. And this is what's called an eccentric cylinder. It's not round. It's not. It's, it's round, but there's the two circles are offset from each other so that when this See thing... That? You can see the gap. When it rotates, oh. there, there's no gap up here. There's a little gap down here. Now, when the, this is the vein, the rotary vein. Rotary means ro rotating around. Mm -hmm. A vein means this little vein thing that goes inside. Makes the water go round. And I won't get into exactly show you how they're held apart yet, but um, so these veins go inside that. There's four of them, but I'm just showing you one. And as holy. <laughs> Sit still. <laughs> All right, so this is the top up here. You can kind of see there's no gap up here. Yeah. And when this turns around like this, the space opens up and... Water. Water is allowed to come in through this little port on this side mm -hmm. and fill up this chamber. And as it rotates around, that, that vein stays against the edge like that. So there's a big gap right there. And then as it comes up to this other side, the, the space in. gets small again and forces it out this side. Okay. One of the cool things about the vein pump is that before this one gets finished with its uh, pushing water out the side, this one, this next chamber uh, has started already and it limits the pressure oscillations that the espresso machine sees. Unlike layman terms it, it's, it's more it's more of a level instead yeah. of going like this okay it's like mm, i see because so, you have all those veins working up right at the so same you have time. four veins turning you know depending on your voltage or your frequency around the world um they spin about 1800 rpm so you have four of these 1800 rpms and since i don't have my phone i can't do the math <laughs> uh, but but it's quite a few times that those little pistons are going, or sorry, the little veins are sweeping water through. And since mm -hmm. the 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 one following the previous one goes before the neck, the previous one is finished, it kind of reduces the pressure oscillations that espresso machine. Real consistent. Sees. Okay. Now, uh, and that's <clears throat> in contrast to the vibe pump, which runs at uh, you know 60 hertz in the United States, 50 hertz around the rest of the world. So that means every, and this uh, cycles, goes back and forth 60 times per second. So it pushes Man, water out 60 mm -hmm. times every second. That's why you get that, 
that sound, uh, the quite a loud sound because this thing's moving back and forth so fast. Yep. Um, so it, on this particular case, it, it pushes water out. Then when it cycles back, it stops pushing, and then it goes forward. It pushes water again. So the, it has some pressure oscillations, although it's it's minor, but there are still some there. And it's electric. It's not run by a motor like that one. It's not electric. It's all it magnetic. converts uh, electrical energy into magnetic energy mm -hmm. by use of this coil, which is really mm -hmm. an inductor, mm -hmm. which stores magnetic energy. Mm -hmm. magnetic and this is it. In energy. I mean, it's weighs less than a pound. Yeah. yeah. So the the cost difference between them is is pretty significant. It's you know the vibe the vibe pump is pretty reasonable cost. They make millions of them a year. You know, there's probably 40 or 50 different manufacturers. Um, they're made of, you know, some plastic and some O-rings and some mm -hmm. uh, metal. Mm -hmm. Whereas you can see that in contrast, you've got um, a big solid brass casting. Bearings. Some bearings, you know, a stainless steel shaft, some um, composite material here, which is like a ceramic with carbon in it. Mm -hmm. um, some other parts that make it quite expensive. So, well, this casting and there's alone a, right here. There's, a, yeah. just, there's not very as many people producing these. Correct. Right. There's uh, maybe okay. four or five manufacturers of, uh, of, these are called carbonator pumps, uh, which we term rotary vane pumps is a more general term. Um, so you had said that this came from the um, vending machine Well, world? originally the carbonator pumps were designed to do the beverage industry, to move uh, carbonated water, to move water through, you know, your drink dispensers and mm -hmm. so forth. So they're kind of made to cycle all the time. They're okay. a really high duty cycle pump. They can be left on for extended periods of time as long as there is uh, fluid in them. Mm -hmm. They can run for short periods of time without fluid. Um, what about the, the vibratory pump? Can it run without fluid? The vibratory pump can run without fluid. It's, it's, des it's designed to run without fluid for a short period of time also. Um, to actually suck water from a water reservoir. So okay. essentially when this piston moves back and forth, it doesn't care if there's air or water yeah, it's it pushing. Yeah, it doesn't look like water is right. going to be the lubricant on this to keep it from right. burning up. Now these, <laughs> since there's a coil and uh, electricity going through there, it does get hot. So these are typically made with a 50% duty cycle. Or if you look on this one, it says 50. It says, doesn't say 50, but this little marking right here is 1 slash 1.5. One minute on for every 1.5 minutes off. There you go. So, you know, it's about 50%. Yeah. Okay. Um, and, th and that's because there's some heat. When, uh, when there's heat involved, some of the plastic expands, some of the seals don't go right, so mm -hmm. forth. So it's, um, mm -hmm. but the cost difference can be, you know, 10 to 20 times different between these two items. So where is it going to make a difference? So what, what, what kind of a consumer at home is going to really notice the difference. Let's see. That's a loaded question. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Well, well we so, this like, obviously, this yeah. guy looks like it's going to be more reliable over time. And in a commercial application, you would, you know, you for that. a commercial but, application, well, it's, it's a must because the duty cycle on a commercial. So, like at home, if you make three or four, uh, you know, espressos a day. At a commercial facility, maybe they're making three or four hundred. Yeah. So they can get a you know a year's use of time in in a day off these vibe pumps. So, you exactly. know, uh, although there are a few commercial machines with um, vibe pumps in them, very few, but mm -hmm. there are some. Um, so if a person at home was really doing high volume, they'd want to really definitely go toward the uh, I'd probably rotary lean, pump. lean towards the rotary. But pump. on a day-to-day, -day, over a seven to ten year period, somebody pulling a couple of shots a day, are they really going to notice a big difference? I, well, that's up to the user, of course. Yeah. yeah. And there's been a lot of tests done on CoffeeGeek and HomeBarista.com that uh, blind tests, you know, with some people influential in the industry who really know coffee, mm -hmm. and they were unable to really discern a difference between the two using two similar machines or yeah. two identical machines just with different pumps. Yep, there you go. Um, although there's other people who swear there's a difference. So well, that's always the case. Yeah. You know, it's subjective. <laughs> yeah. So um, aside from heavy-duty kind of applications, yeah. what other reasons why would you choose one uh, pump over the other? There's definitely a noise factor. Okay. The, the noise from the rotary pump uh, is definitely a lot less than the vibe pump. Mm -hmm. Now, see, I would call it less, but I wouldn't call it a lot less. And that's a it's personal less, thing. It's less, and it's a different noise. It's a different so, tone. Um, to me, the grinder in the room is the... The elephant yeah, in the, the room. Yeah. <laughs> Grinders have a lot, lot louder than the vibe pump. Yeah. Um, 
So yeah, I guess uh, there are different. It's a different noise. Whether or not it's louder or not, I don't know. And then um, also we see these on the home machines if they're mm -hmm. uh, plumb in, either convertible or plumb only. Uh -huh. Mm -hmm. um, so why is like why is that the case? Well, one particular reason is these vibe pumps were made for zero pressure or negative pressure at the the inlet. In other words, water tank. Versus so pressure so from if, the if you oh, actually okay. force water through here, th this pump will not work as well. I see. Um, so these are not designed to have pressure in the inlet. Okay. And these these rotary vane pumps are what's called a differential pump. So you can have from zero to, you know, six, seven bar at the inlet mm -hmm. and still adjust this to get nine bar out, out of the exit. Mm -hmm. So these are far more adjustable, especially when you are doing a, a plumb inversion. Okay. Matter of fact, I don't think you can, I'm sure somebody will say no, but uh, I'm sure you, you cannot use these for a plumb inversion when there's pressure at the inlet. That was my understanding. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I, and also like you can, uh, you can adjust to these guys to, if you have like really high pressure in your house. Correct. So mm -hmm. okay. you can adjust these. The, these essentially they're, they're the same adjustment as a vibe pump. Mm -hmm. The vibe pump usually has a pressure relief or an over pressure valve that you adjust. So uh, as you get to nine bar, the over pressure valve will relieve a little bit so you don't uh, go beyond that. Okay. And it's the same with this. This has a very similar pressure relief valve inside mm -hmm. that is against a spring and you press, uh, you screw this in to put more tension on the spring, which pushes the pressure relief valve against the, oh, yeah. the body on the inside. You can see it. And essentially, it, it relieves the pressure inside here instead of externally like you would on a bipod. Mm -hmm. Okay. Cool. And then, so reliability, obviously heavy. Um, repairability, so like obviously this guy, mm -hmm. um, you might want to repair given yes. the, the core cost of it, whereas uh -huh. this one might be more of a replacement. Candidate. It all depends on cost and, you know, uh, if you send it in to have repaired, these will probably cost more than a new pump to have repaired by a facility. So, okay. But if you wanted to do it by yourself, I don't, I don't even know if they sell repair kits for these, but the typical things that go wrong is um, there's another little uh, spring and a rubber seal in here. There's a couple O-rings, but typically... Most of this stuff is metal, and as long as the plastic's not cracked, mm -hmm. yeah, it's yeah. usually some piece of sediment inside that has gotten caught in one of the valves or one of the rubber seats that you know is allowing water to pass. So on the rotary pump, though, all of these pieces that are ceramic yeah. uh, with carbon, these are all going to wear and can be replaced, I would assume, the veins uh -huh. and all that? So typically, these parts are designed for extremely high wear. Uh, mm -hmm. Rarely do do these parts go bad? Oh, okay. It's it's the veins, and it's not necessarily where the vein rubs against this part. It's on the opposite side where there's a little pin that connects these two veins together so they stay the correct distance apart. Oh. And you'll see there's a little indentation yep. on these. And some are more pronounced than others. And as these things move, this thing wears inside. So those veins go? Yeah. Does and it, the, do the metal pins wear out as well? Not necessarily. You, uh -huh. Usually the veins will go before that. And uh -huh. it's not necessarily veins wearing, it's just they're the rubbing pin. a hole inside, which allows them to move a little bit, and water can seep past, and you don't build as much pressure anymore. Mm -hmm. All right. Mm -hmm. So that's the sort of technical Ooh. breakdown. Thanks, Bill. Um, so now we're going to move into doing a sound test. Yep, we got the and then, uh, phone that does it all. Yeah, and then we'll do a shot test. Excellent. We'll right back. Okay, that's the rotary. And let's be real quiet and look at our ambient here. So it's about 30 different. Okay. I couldn't see it. You could. I was, I'm trying to run two hands. <laughs> okay, same place, same rotary versus vibratory. Okay, that's the rotary. It's about 20. Okay. Okay. So you can tell, the, I mean, it's... For me, it's not the problem in the room. It's the grinder that's a, that's the noisy but thing. But there is some. But there is a there difference. Is a difference. It's a tone difference. Mm -hmm. 
It's it's just like well, you heard it. Yes. Okay. All right. All right. We're gonna double whammy these. I'm not gonna do the pre-fusion because that would have been too much for me to do. <laughs> Gail could only multitask so much. Come on. I did notice we did a test shot to dial in the grinder. I did notice that the uh, rotary pump started to produce at the same tamp and grind a little bit faster but at the end of the day they were about the same in timing and we're using the Mazer Mini Mazer e. Mini with the Equator Espresso mm -hmm. all right mm -hmm. yummy I think we're good Gail this guy's <laughs> over the top okay well it's because they're tamped a little different what can I say mm. Mm. I just spilt coffee down my front oh! <laughs> on a white shirt. <laughs> oh, nothing like what it, uh, one of our other employees the other day had a thing like this. <laughs> had to wear that all day. Hmm. I won't mention her name. <laughs> Let me taste that one one more time. Mmm, chocolatey tones. I really love this espresso. I'm not really detecting very yeah. very little difference they're both very good cool yeah there i don't know if i noticed any difference really well i learned the functionality of how the two different pumps rotary versus vibratory work mm -hmm. what the basics are and having one sit right there to see what it's like you can really see the difference in them and why the volume for the rotary pump is necessary i mean why you would use that in a high volume area for me it, like commercial yeah, yeah yeah i mean the mechanical mind i look at it and go absolutely this is what you would have to have if you're doing high volume. Now, at home, it's not such an issue. Okay. Um, you will get a little quieter tones out of the rotary pump. You can rebuild it easily, and it's probably worth rebuilding versus the vibratory pump. It's so inexpensive to just purchase another pump. Mm -hmm. You wouldn't want to put the time into it, especially if you're paying somebody to do it. But as far as um, did we taste it practically no. in the shot? No. We, we brewed shots on both rocket machines, which everything equal except for the pumps. This is the Cellini Premium Plus, and that was the Giotto Evoluzione. Yes. And um, rotary. Same coffee. Uh, vibratory. We used the one grinder. Everything equal. The taste was the same. Cool. All right. Well, that was our pump extravaganza. Thanks, Gail. It was. And the other thing I did learn. Oh. One other thing. The size of the motor to run that rotary pump. Yes. <laughs> there's the weight in that yeah. machine. You got your five pound bag of sugar sitting there. Yes, you do. Yeah, that's what I <laughs> cool. Thanks, yep. Gail. Bye.